you are about to explore infinity. Fractals have started to enter popular culture and are recognized as these very interesting, beautiful patterns in math and nature. But fractals are so much more than just pretty images. Fractals are the pictures of chaos and complexity theory. And because we live in a complex world full of chaos, we can learn important lessons from studying fractals. Lessons about nature and science, but also about social systems and political systems, even deep spiritual questions. Much of what I'm going to talk about today deals with education, because that's what I focus on in my day-to-day -day job. We use the beauty of fractals to inspire interest in science and math. And fractals are really great for this. They make it fun and exciting and beautiful. This is a slogan, and really it's the art that hooks people. The art is what generates the excitement and the motivation necessary to learn math and science. And what we do is so important. It's urgently needed. We have a crisis in our culture about math and science education, and we desperately need to improve our performance. So what we're doing is vital. And normally, this is what I talk about, how we use fractals in education. And I will touch on that. But I'm also going to talk about some of the deeper, bigger questions, things, lessons that are valuable for all of us. The experience of exploring fractals is profoundly spiritual. We take people and put them face to face with the infinite. When we zoom people into fractals in our planetarium shows, fully immersed in fractals, we take them to things that are smaller than single atoms or bigger than the entire universe. That is mind expanding. We can also learn important lessons from chaos and nonlinear systems that we can apply to our social order, our social systems and networks and political systems. So, for instance, we can learn from nature and from fractals how to more harmoniously get along with our neighbors, both locally and globally, and with the other living species that we share the world with. So these three areas, education, spirituality, politics, might superficially seem unrelated. They're actually profoundly interconnected. We could keep looking at pictures of the Mandelbrot set like this, but instead I'm going to bring it to life and show you really how it works. So I'm going to introduce you to this fractal by zooming us into this never-ending pattern. This, first of all, picture yourself, pretend you're in a planetarium. That's the ideal place to explore fractals like this. Fully immersed in this fractal, so you're, you're floating in space, falling into this shape, and it goes forever. A fractal is a shape that's made up of little copies of its shape, of the same shape, over and over and over again. And this is so much fun. We choreograph this with live music, and uh, it, it, it rocks. We like to say fractals rock. And I mean, a testament to that is how successful the shows are. They've sold out over 150 times in a row. For a math and science show, that is unheard of. <laughs> I mean, literally, I've heard of people scalping tickets to get in. That's how cool it is. Thank you. And really, it's this encounter with infinity that makes it both entertaining and mind-expanding. Now, we could go on and on and on forever, but they've got us on a pretty strict time schedule. So I'm going to stop here at a depth of 10 to the 16th power. That is a million times smaller than a single atom, but we're just scratching the surface. And all of that beautiful complexity that you saw comes from this preposterously simple equation. That is an amazing thing. One of the lessons of studying these things is that doing a simple process over and over again creates complexity. We teach this kind of algebra to students long before they're supposed to know any kind of algebra at all because they demand it. They have to know how this thing works. It's, it's vital, urgent curiosity that motivates this learning. Now, I want to show you a few examples of fractal patterns in nature, because that's what grounds it in reality, makes it more than just pretty pictures. 
nature's full of fractals, these never-ending patterns that copy themselves at different scales, like in plants. And we can see lessons about how simple processes repeated over and over again create complexity, like in the growth of a tree, which just follows a simple rule. It branches and the branches branch over and over again. And that ends up creating a very complex, beautiful object, which has the property that a little piece looks like the whole thing. Now, nature uses this idea over and over again. We find this inside our bodies. We are full of fractals. These literally are ideas that make us. We find fractals in our blood vessels, in our lungs, our kidneys, our brain cells. We really are full of fractals. And the surface of the Earth is carved deep with fractals as well. The river networks, the watersheds, gather rainfall from huge areas of land and funnel it into a river. And when the river reaches the sea, it branches in a fractal river delta. I like to say that nature reuses its patterns. It recycles its ideas from system to system. And that's one of the important lessons that I teach when I share these ideas with children, that nature creates these patterns over and over again. And we can use simple mathematics to describe and understand how they work. Fractals are the math that describes nature. It's math made fun and relevant because it's about things that people actually care about. Over the last 10 years, I've taught over 32,000 children about fractals. I like to say that's over 8% of the way to leaving no child unfractaled. <laughs> and they all love fractals. Now, we've heard about this idea, most of us, of the butterfly effect, in which small changes early in a system lead to big differences in the outcome. And that's what we are playing with here. That's what we're doing. We are planting fractal seeds in fertile minds. And there is no way to prove a link between teaching kids fractals and their future success as scientists or innovators, engineers, artists. But I know that it's true. Here's how. When I was in second grade at Monta Vista Elementary School here, I was in a gifted class where a brain scientist came in from UNM and visited our class, and he brought us a human brain. He gave us rubber gloves and let, it, let us touch it. It was the most awesome thing I had ever seen. I don't remember anything else from second grade. That's what <laughs> sticks with me. And it made such a profound impact on me that, well, I now have a PhD in neuroscience. I don't know if that would have happened if that scientist hadn't taken an hour out of his day to come share that with us. So that inspires me every time I go and work in a classroom of children. I want to show some of the ideas and projects that we do that inspire children with fractals. Here's a project we do called the Fractal Triangulathon, where we teach kids how to make these kinds of never-ending patterns that get smaller and smaller. And then we assemble them. We put three of them together to make a bigger version of the same shape. And then we keep growing this never-ending pattern bigger and bigger. Here we see 81 triangles from Carlsbad. We've got 243 triangles. These actually were made by students in Australia, because this is an international project. And now I'm going to show you the assembly of the world's largest fractal triangle. We did this in March. And this is made up of 2,187 individual triangles from children all over the world. This was so exciting. And because fractals teach us that there are no limits, we're going to break our own record next year with one three times bigger. Here's another great project we do called the Albuquerque Fractal Challenge. What we do here is we give away free fractal software that lets kids zoom into fractals. You can download it yourself from our website and play with the math. So they zoom in and they're exploring. It feels more like a video game than a math lesson. But in fact, it's both. And it's an art project. So every year, our judges choose eight winning fractals. They're the most interesting and beautiful designs. And we put them out in the world as giant public artworks. And what we're doing is we're turning these children into role models, into heroes in their schools and communities. Can you imagine the impact that this will have on a fifth grader to have the entire world see her art like this? This makes it cool to like math and science. We have enough sports heroes. We have enough movie stars. What we need are science heroes and math stars. And that's what we're creating with fractals. Now, I serve as something of a role model myself. 
as a mathematical rock star artist. And <laughs> I love showing people how much fun and how exciting and beautiful fractals are. I have such a great time designing and building and flying these crazy beautiful artworks. And since we're here in a hard rock, I thought I'd share one of my more entertaining installations. This is a piece of applied mathematics that shows up in an unexpected place. I like doing that to people. It's like, what? Fractals are everywhere. And here's a glimpse into the future. These don't exist yet, except in my head and in the computer. But what we're going to do is take mathematical fractals like the Mandelbrot set and print them on balloon fabric and assemble the largest, highest resolution computer images ever made. They'll have about 100 billion pixels in here. So you'll be able to see the fractal pattern from a mile away or a millimeter away. 100 billion pixels. For comparison, that's, that's as many neurons as we have in our brain. That's as many stars as there are in the galaxy. It's incredibly huge. Let's get back down to Earth, though. You don't need a million dollar budget or even a computer to make fractals. You just need a good imagination. This was made by a third grader who was doodling while I was lecturing. <laughs> and kids get it. I hear them say the most amazing things and do the most extraordinary things. I hear them say things like, I can't wait to learn algebra so I can explore fractals better. It really does work. And we need to start, well, we need to stop thinking of creativity as something that just belongs in an art classroom and start cultivating this in our math and science classes as well. That way, our students will be able to create innovative new ideas, new devices inspired by fractals, like this computer cooling circuit inspired by our circulatory system, or like a high resolution fluid mixing device for chemical engineering. These are instances of an emerging field we call biomimicry, where we copy the designs of nature. Because when nature comes up with a solution to something, it's been tested by millions of years of natural selection, and it works really well. So it behooves us to learn those lessons and to copy those kinds of ideas. That brings us to the tree of life. This is the great evolutionary family tree of all living things. This shows where we come from and how we are all connected. I find this picture so beautiful. Did God create us? Or are we created by the process of natural selection repeated over and over again? What if that was really the same thing? Fractals represent the creative force of nature. Clearly, the data shows that simple things repeated over and over again create complexity. So let's not get hung up on semantics, words. Let's just focus on the power and the beauty of these phenomena, emergence, complexity, feedback, fractals. That's where the real power is. This picture tells a story also of a revolution. Not a political revolution, but a biological one. Up until, well, for the first two billion years or so of life, we were all single cells, organisms living individually. But then about 700 million years ago, something amazing happened, and we learned to cooperate. And the single cells started specializing and grouping together to form multicellular organisms. This was a huge breakthrough. It was so successful. It was a great idea. And out of this came all the diversity of life that we see around us. This is where we come from. We humans are now poised at a similar moment in our own cultural evolution, where we're not just six billion individuals. We now are connected with the internet as our nervous system, and we are emerging as a new meta-organism, humanity. Incredibly exciting things to be aware of. This fractal parallel between the cells in a body and people in society is not just a frivolous analogy. They follow the same mathematical rules. If you look at a fractal city like this, this is London. It's a collection of villages, which are collections of neighborhoods, collections of houses, collections of people. Well, the, the efficiency of a city, the way that it scales with size, it goes as the population to the three quarters power. It's a power law. The very same formula describes how bigger animals with more cells use energy more efficiently and live longer. The same mathematics. The most important lesson from this is that the trillions and trillions of cells inside your body 
have learned how to thrive by cooperating. And I want to return to the butterfly effect. We have so much to learn from this simple little creature. It can change the world with a flap of its wings. We need to cultivate our own butterfly power. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to stop using blunt, linear, brute force solutions for complex nonlinear problems. They don't work. More often than not, they backfire. They waste a lot of energy, and they don't accomplish what we want. Unintended consequences. And then what we need to do is start looking at the smallest possible changes we can make to a system that will guide its evolution in the desired direction. Now, this takes some patience. This takes the faith to let it work. This, most of all, takes vision. What if that's how our government worked? What if government was nimble and agile and responsive and changed itself all the time in response to changing circumstances? Not once a year, once every four years, every minute. And at the same time, maintained a long-term vision that would guide us stably across decades or centuries. This is possible. What if our schools were designed to nurture individual differences instead of homogenizing students? What if math and science were taught to be fun and exciting the way it really is? Well, just think of what differences these things would make. The most important lesson is that we are not powerless. We are incredibly powerful. We can all change the world. Our power comes from our creativity and our connectivity. That's how we all have the chance to change the world. Now, I've showed you some examples of how fractals will impact our future. Now I want to show you a glimpse into the future of fractals themselves. Because math is fun and dynamic, it keeps evolving. This is a brand new fractal that was just discovered in February. It's called the Mandelbox. And given that it's an infinite world, creative possibilities to explore. If you look deeply enough within it, you can find just about anything. So please, enjoy. I'm Jonathan Wolf, the Fractal Man, and welcome to the future of fractals. Thank you.